In this video, we're going to be looking at hexadecimal addition and subtraction. They're both pretty straightforward, but if you're using the Digital Fundamentals textbook, the subtraction portion can be fairly confusing to read, but we'll get to that. Let's first look at addition in hexadecimal. When adding hexadecimal numbers, we treat the problem just like we would if we were adding decimal numbers. But instead of carrying a 1 when we have a sum that's greater than 9, in hex, we carry the 1 when we have a sum that's greater than 15. Essentially, we're just going to convert the letters of the hex system to base 10, add the numbers in base 10, and then convert back, carrying a 1 when the sum is greater than 15, like we just talked about. So here are a few examples. We have 23 plus 16, 2b plus 84, and df plus ac. We'll start with 23 plus 16. 6 and 3 are 9, 2 and 1 makes 3. And so in hex, 23 plus 16 is 39, just like in base 10. Okay, now let's look at the next example. 2b plus 84. First, we're going to convert b to decimal. This is of course 11. 11 and 4 make 15. Now convert back to hex. 15 is f. So now we add 8 plus 2, and this is 10, which in hex is A. So our answer to 2B plus 84 is AF. Okay, so far so good. Now let's tackle the third set, which will require us to carry a 1. DF plus AC. Convert F and C to decimal. This is 15 and 12. Adding these two together, we get 27. Now obviously this is greater than 15, so we need to carry over to the next place value. But what is left over? Since we're carrying a power of 16 to the next place value, we're going to subtract this from 27. So 27 minus 16 is 11. 11 is B, so we have B in the ones place and carry a 1 to the next place. Now we have D plus A plus 1. Again, we convert these to hex and get 13 plus 10 plus 1. This sum is 24, so we need to carry again. 24 minus 16 leaves 8 in the 16's place, and there is only a 1 in the next place. The final sum of DF plus AC is 1AB. So that wasn't so bad, was it? Well, now we come to subtraction. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the textbook gives a slightly confusing approach to three methods for carrying out subtraction. But the funny thing is, these three methods, they're all the same. It is twos complement subtraction, like we covered before with binary numbers, but achieving it three different ways. I'll go over twos complement, explain the three methods and how they are all the same, and then I'll show you how to treat the problem just like we did with addition, which is not covered in the textbook. So let's jump in to the twos complement method. If you have seen my video on binary arithmetic, then you've heard me state that there is no such thing as subtraction. There is only combination. When we looked at binary subtraction, we saw how simply adding the twos complement will achieve the same goal as regular subtraction. The same is true with hex. Because hex is so easily translatable to binary, we're simply going to convert the subtrahend, that is, the bottom number, into binary, take the twos complement, convert it back to hex, add the two numbers together, and boom, mission complete. If there is a carry in the most significant digits place, we're going to discard it, just like in binary subtraction. So let's try an example. 84 minus 2a. We start by converting 2a to binary. Okay, now we take the 2's complement. Remember that we flip all the bits and then add 1 to find a number's 2's complement. Now that we have our complement in binary, we convert this back to hex. 1101 is 13, which in hex is D. 0110 is 6 which is still 6 in hex. Okay, now we're going to add 84 and D6. 6 and 4 make 10, which is A in hex. 
D and 8 is 13 plus 8, which is 21. This gives us a carry situation. So we should subtract 16 to get 5 and carry the 1. This 1 is going to get discarded since we're dealing with two digit numbers. And our final answer is 5A. Okay, I told you all three methods outlined in the text are three ways of doing the same thing. The second method finds the two's complement by subtracting FF, the largest two digit hex number, minus 2A. This will give us the one's complement of 2A, which means we only need to add one to this to get the two's complement. FF minus 2A is D5. So D5 is the one's complement. So we're gonna add one to this, and that gives us D6, the two's complement. Now if we can subtract 2A from FF to try and get the one's complement, then what is stopping us from subtracting 84 minus 2A? The answer, of course, is nothing. Nothing is stopping us, and that is what I will show you after we review the third method from the text. So, now we have the two's complement, D6. From here, the procedure is the same as the first method. We add 84 and D6. This will give us 15A. We drop the 1, and the answer is 5A. Now, on to the third method of getting the two's complement. In this method, we write the numbers out in hex in increasing order, 0 to f. Then below this, we write them in descending order from f to 0. Each number on top is paired with a number on the bottom. By circling 2 and a on the top with their corresponding letters or numbers on the bottom, you'll notice that we have the 1's complement of 2a. So we just need to add 1 to get the 2's complement. This is exactly the same thing as subtracting FF minus 2A. You can even do the same thing in decimal, actually. Here's an example. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, so all three of these methods are ways of achieving the same goal, performing two's complement addition. The only difference is how you achieve getting the two's complement of the subtrahend. Okay, so next we will try just subtracting the two numbers, just like you would in decimal subtraction. The thing we have to keep in mind is this. When the top number is bigger than the bottom, we're not borrowing 10 from the next place value. We're borrowing 16. So let's look at an example. C3 minus 0B. B, which in decimal is 11, is bigger than 3. So we have to borrow from C. C becomes one, one less, which is B. And we borrow 16 to add to 3. This, of course, makes 19. So we subtract 19 minus 11 and get 8. Now we have b minus 0 in the next column. No conversion needed here. b minus 0 is b. Our answer is b8. So this is just as simple, if not simpler, than 2's complement. That is pretty much all we need to know about hex arithmetic. Hopefully at this point, you're getting pretty good at the hex to decimal and hex to binary conversions. Knowing these by heart will make hex arithmetic much faster and easier. As always, if you like what I'm putting out in these videos, consider subscribing. If you found this video to be particularly good, smash that like button. If you want to be notified when I post new videos, hit the notification bell. Next, we'll be covering octal or base 8 numbers. Until next time.